Hello YouTube, uh, it's Yuan again and today we're going to be looking at uh, one of my favorite uh, rich field objects, meaning a uh, great image with a longer focal length telescope. And this is the Elephant Trunk Nebula or IC1396. Um, it takes its name from the fact that the central formation look like a, looks like an elephant's trunk pointing up. It's about 2400 light years away from Earth in the constellation Cepheus. I've imaged this a bunch of times with a wider telescope and my older trust tube. So I'm excited to share what I've done and let's get into it. So this is the telescope I use, the Officina Stellare um, RC. Really, really good telescope. Um, this data is still from the time I was suffering from some spherical aberration due to a secondary baffle problem, but the data is still excellent. The mount is the ME1 from Paramount, one of the best mounts I've seen. Uh, it is very, very easy to use. The software for it, the SkyX, makes it pretty intuitive and easy to plan your imaging sessions. Uh, I'm, using, I'm using a QHY600 Mono professional edition, which it's really almost the same as the photographic with a small difference in temperature and some fiber connections that I haven't used. But again, it's a very good camera. It has multiple read modes. In this particular configuration, I'm using it in the high gain settings with an offset of 50 and a gain of 56. The reason I'm using a higher offset is because I wanted to remove some of the background um, noise that comes with imaging with a faster telescope. My telescope is f5.4, focal length 1680, and it has a 12.5 primary mirror. That's why it's called a 320. Um, I have enough videos with the telescope sitting next to me that you can follow the Lagoon Nebula, the Veil Nebula, sorry, the Lagoon, the Orion Nebula, they will have it. Check them out on my channel. Um, we're not going to look at that for now, but this is one of my nicer images I took of the Elephant Trunk Nebula. This is captured with the Officina Stellare uh, Riccardi Hunters, the 8-inch uh, little astrograph at F3. Um, this is also the entire nebula. The part we're going to be looking at today is much smaller, probably about this much. So this is 600 millimeters. This is... 1680 so a little bit of a difference 50 percent more aperture so a lot more light the light bucket really works well let's look at the data per channel hydrogen like always nice clean the problems i was facing are these which kind of reflect my frustrations with the telescope at the time you can see there's like weird concentric um rings around the stars that's because of a secondary baffle, but the data is well flat fielded. Hydrogen always looks great. Uh, sulfur is actually really nice. It's very nice and outliny. It looks really clean. I'm really excited with what I got. Um, and lastly, oxygen. Oxygen, like always, it's the silhouette of hydrogen and, and uh, sulfur. So you can see it's basically the inverted part, but even this, is actually decently clean, um, except for the weird star operations. I was kind of intrigued of the what I would get. So again, I also wanted to emphasize this little piece of the elephant trunk, which is a little limb that comes all the way to the top of the trunk. Really like that formation, that dust formation, and I wanted to capture it. And there's all a lot of dark nebulosity around, so that was also something I wanted to highlight and show. So let's see what my stack looked like. Um, I did a regular SHO, so nothing too special. Sulfur for red, hydrogen for green, and oxygen for blue. After that, I did a blood exterminator, which reduced the stars a little bit. It does kind of increase this nasty effect that you see here, but it does really bring out some of the detail through the deconvolution, like the details in the trunk at the bottom, the top, and even this little... Uh, wisp up here. So the data looks clean, looks good. It needed some cropping. Um, like usual, I would uh, take the data, stretch it, remove the green, 
um, do some kind of uh, S-curve to it, maybe some HDR transform, I think that's the case here, and then it would go to Photoshop for color mixing and texturization. But this is what I had before, and if you see, my previous star processing wasn't the best. It almost looks like these are, I don't know, pixels, um, hot and cold pixels. The actual color scheme is nice. I liked, the, I, I liked it at the time. It was pretty good. It looked um, relatively um, different enough that I liked it. It's towards the red that I like, but I really hated the stars and it was bugging me how bad these would look through the process that I use through my star reduction. It has nothing to do with those processes, just that I never protected the nebulosity and I stretched the stars and then I tried to make them smaller. So I ended up looking again. I am not proud of this here. <laughs> This is super saturated, not the best, but we're not here for that. We're here for actually what I did today. And today I, I'm actually pretty proud uh, of the data. So this is the starless one. I like that you can see the wisp coming off it. You can see the dark nebulosity. You can see the, the formations here. I also flipped it because I like the way the trunk would look. I almost feel like this would be the normal way you would see the elephant's trunk. Um, again, um, if you have a, I don't know, an off-axis, an on-axis guider or an onag, you will see the image like this anyway. So it's how we present it, how we want to show it to the world. So lastly, the image with the stars is actually pretty cool. Now, if we go close to the stars, the stars are pinpoints, they're nice, they're small. They're not uh, overly saturated. Very, very good results. And again, I cannot say enough great things about the new way uh, of integrating stars with James Lamb's script. I'll link his video in the description because he deserves uh, a lot of views for his videos and a lot of appreciation. This is my final image. I, did, I do see some kind of magenta tinting. I could remove it easily by flipping, inverting the image and doing an SCNR, but I actually like it. I like the way the image looks. I'm really excited I could catch this little wisp. Uh, with the seeing I had and everything that was then, actually this is pretty impressive. So I like it and let me know what you guys think about it. And I have a couple of more exciting projects to do videos on I'll, as soon as I can, but uh, this is the Elephant Trunk Nebula. The data is in 2021. It's around my usual 24 hours of data, about seven and a half hours per channel, seven hours, seven and a half hours of oxygen, hydrogen, and sulfur. Um, and this is just a regular standard SHO, no custom luminous, no nothing. I usually do those for uh, nebula nebulas that have uh, don't have a lot of oxygen or, or the oxygen needs to be really put up, uh, increased. So this is the elephant trunk taken with the Officina Stellari RC. And thank you for watching. If you like my channel, if you like my um, images, my explanations, feel free to subscribe, share, comment. Um, anything will help the channel. So I appreciate it. Until next time, clear skies.